Hey, I'm Dave Haas, and you're watching Band App TV. Okay, it's Colin here from Band App, and I'm here with Dave Haas. How you doing, man? I'm well. How are you? Yeah, really good. How was your show? Are you were telling me you were like crowd surfing, and it was a good singing. Yeah, along? you know, it, it was early, but uh, by the end, we had a full tent, and everyone was singing along. I ended up standing on the crowd. <laughs> it was <just laughs> crazy, but yeah, it was it was fun. It's like the '80s all over again, isn't it? Those old hardcore yeah. shows, man. It's good. Yeah. I love it because you see all the signs nowadays. Everything like that seems to be banned and frowned upon, whereas. When I used to go to shows back in the day, it was all part of it, you know, that real... Well, people can get hurt. I mean, I, I was gentle. I, I came down and, and sort of drifted up there. <laughs> I didn't... I didn't. It was people... a casual way. Yeah, yeah. It was, I've had a few years on me now. I'm a bit wiser. So, uh... Yeah, I know how to not hurt people. I hope. Cool. So I want to just, just um, talk about your second album, Devour, just a little bit. Okay. Um, when I listen to it, you know, the, the lyrics kind of mean, seem to mean quite a lot. Um, and I, you know, I didn't really know how you'd want to kind of talk about it or anything, but I just wanted to know if maybe you wanted to kind of talk a little bit about the lyrics and kind of yes. what was your thinking behind it when you were writing them? Well, I just found myself in my in my 30s and and life hadn't quite worked out the way I thought, and it was that way for a lot of my peers, and I wanted to figure out where we came from, which is kind of the first third of the record, and then the middle is like where we're at. Yeah. Okay, we're here. We're dealing with broken relationships and trouble and, and bad patterns. And then the last third is kind of like where you want to go, you know, like can, can, you, can you at this age come up with uh, something positive and, and a way to go forward without despair? Yeah, because yeah. there's some real beautiful moments on it as well. Oh, so, thanks, man. Know, I appreciate that. It does, you know, and I think it's, you know, because when I listen to the record, it's one of those things that, it, you know, because I'm, you know, I'm in my 30s as well, and mm -hmm. you kind of look back, and when you're younger, and it's almost like you don't really know what you're supposed to do when you're younger. You don't. And when you're older, your situation doesn't necessarily change, but you kind of feel as though you should know what to do. So, uh, you know what yeah. I mean? It's like... A little crossfade! Yeah! yeah. They're young. Some ambiance. <laughs> but, you know, that's kind of how I was feeling about when I was listening to it, you know, because, like you say, you know, you've made music for a long time, you're in the lucky ones. You know, how is that kind of changing? Yeah, from, you know, I think you just get a little, you get a little wiser. You, you, a little, not much, yeah. but you start to realize, like, where maybe you're at fault and where you could do better. And, and um, I think you just hopefully apply some of that stuff and try to, you know, change is good. Yeah. And uh, try to change the things that you that you can, and, and let go of the stuff that you can. Mm. Hopefully, move forward in a positive way. It's I life's short. It's, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a really kind of brave decision, you know, to kind of go off and just do that. And what sort of, I mean, what do you I mean? If you want to talk about it, it's fine. But what sort of goes through your mind when you kind of realize that maybe it's one thing is coming to an end, and, and what you want to do is, you know. Not even necessarily progress in a similar style of music, but literally you go almost completely on a tangent. And you still seem to have brought you know, a lot of fans with you as well, which is great. Well, I mean, it's I'm, it's still the same songwriter or whatever, yeah. you know, so it's still the same beating heart for the yeah. loved ones or for this. But yeah. uh, it's risky. Yeah, I know, yeah. But uh, it's gone well, and, and I think the encouragement of people, like, if it, I feel like if you put your heart on the line and, and really write from a place that's honest and, or, and, and compelling, you know, and, you know, semi-informed, yeah. that people will come along with you. Yeah. There's, there are people out there who aren't just on Instagram and, and aren't just waiting for that kick drum thump. Like, there are people who love songs. Yeah. I mean, I'm one of them, and I gotta believe... I mean, I'm not that smart. There's plenty of other people who are smarter than me who get songs, so I think... Uh, yeah, I think, I think that you just have to trust that if you feel good about what you're doing, that somebody else might, too, and, and there'll be an audience for it. Oh, that's cool, man. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. All right. Sorry, just move on a bit now. So, just to line it up a bit anyway, last couple of questions. So, yeah. Dream Festival, if you're going to pick three headliners, who would you uh, get on the bill? Uh, alive or dead? Can be both. Whatever suits oh, you. Oh, you got to have the Clash play. Yep. Um, the Beatles. Yep. I mean, the obvious ones, but I mean, the minor threat would be really fun. <laughs> yeah, they could probably uh, still do it, though, couldn't they, if they really wanted yeah, to? Yeah, they could. Minor threat, uh, Bad Brains, they would be fun. Oh. Um, 
The Beastie Boys. The Beastie Boys are, yeah. uh, I mean, yeah. god damn, what a band. I saw those guys on the uh, Ill Communication tour. Yeah, and, um, me too. I was a massive uh, Faith No More fan as well. Yeah, at the me time. too. And uh, literally was seeing Faith No More like three times in that particular, and then the Beastie Boys show was kind of in the middle of that. And I, the party atmosphere, the fun, you know, I just the didn't think there was anything the like it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sadly, yeah. Yeah, they, they were, I think them, let's pick them, them and The Clash. Yeah. All right, good choices, good choices. <laughs> All right, so uh, any top tips, right, or bands, anything you'd like to tell yourself? When you're younger, anything like that? Oh, uh, top tips for the festival? Uh, top tips for bands, you know. Oh, for bands. The bands oh, come up to you. Just you know, follow you... your heart and treat people with dignity. You know, if you do those two things, you can feel good about yourself. Cool. Well, that says it all. Thank you so much for your time. That was awesome. Cheers. Thanks, Dave. Right on.